Hey folks, Technoverse here. Today we are taking a look at the Focus FDM 3D printer. This is an Odin 5F3. So just got this guy. I'm really hoping that they put as much love into the printer as they did into the packaging. This almost looks like a console box and I'm kind of impressed already. So we'll take a good look, open everything up and see what's in here. And I think you're actually going to be pleasantly surprised with the contents of this box. So let's jump right into it right now. Hey folks, Technoverse here. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, but stick around because today we're going to be talking about some pretty interesting stuff I don't think you're going to want to miss. Alright, so like I said, the packaging is obviously gorgeous. Uh, it looks like everything is pretty well designed in English. This is obviously another Chinese company from Shenzhen. Um, so. A lot of these printers, people don't realize, come from the exact same city and province in China, regardless of the brand, and they use a lot of the same parts. This one has a couple of differences from some of the machines we've seen before, such as the smooth fronts on the rails here, uh, but they still have the rail for the wheel system for the pulleys on the belt. So let's go ahead and open this guy up and see what comes in the actual box. If you're curious, the back side of the box is pretty much the same picture on the side. However, it does have some specifications, and we can go over those really quickly. Um, it's going to tell you the name here. We have the model. The build size is slightly larger than Ender 3, 235, 235 by 250. And it is obviously an FDM machine, 1.75 millimeter filament. It will go... Hmm. Working temperature says 5 to 38 degrees Celsius, so that's interesting. Uh, 41 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I think that means the temperature of the room that it's in, not the actual printing temperature, because it says working temperature. So uh, let's go ahead and get this guy up. Now I'm going to set the box down here out of your sight for just a second while I pull the styrofoam out. some stuff here. The first foam to pull is a box labeled accessories, which we will take out, take a look at, and some focus filament. Uh, this looks like a white or an almost natural, and it looks like there is about 500 grams there, so that's quite a sample to come with a printer. I've been seeing the amount of filament included with printers go down and down and down lately. Uh, it's nice to see somebody throwing in a fair amount to get a few models going if you're new to the whole situation. Well, let's check out this box full of accessories here. Looks like we have everything we're going to need. A power cord, a cable, our scraper, there's obviously some tools, standard socket or the, the standard Allen wrench and little crescent wrench set there. A um, little bit of hardware. A nice vial, now that is a nozzle cleaning needle. That's a good way to store that. Normally they come with just a piece of styrofoam on the tip and I've jabbed my fingers a few times. This is gonna be the ribbon cabling. We're gonna need that, obviously. There is spool holder. This will get mounted on the machine as well. A couple of end caps for the extrusion. And it looks like the exact same clippers you would get with an Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, Ender 3 V2. Um, these are Zoron clippers, they're pretty common. I in fact actually have a couple more pairs laying right here. So um, good working clippers though, those are very nice. There is also a USB stick we're going to toss over here because we'll be loading that up on the computer and I'm assuming it has some test models. We'll get one of those going and a couple of nozzles. Now these are the longer style nozzles so um, I don't have a ton of these it's nice that they included two extra ones we're gonna go ahead and put the wrenches whoops the scraper the nozzle cleaner even the power cable USB cable back in there because we're not going to use any of that stuff the end caps will pull out eventually but I have so many Allen wrenches out already that it's just kind of gonna make a mess to add to the pile filament we're gonna set over here by the filament holder and the 
hardware and instructions and ribbon cables will obviously leave right there. Now, one of the big things that this printer is touting is the fact that it is foldable. So you can slide it away for easy storage. Now, how foldable it is, I haven't exactly seen yet. <clears throat> But I have a pretty good idea. So let's take a look. Ooh, that's a pretty hot end. A lot of these printers lately have been switching to the ribbon cables instead of standard wiring. Seems to work a little bit better. Let's flip this guy over. And that's the front there. We'll go ahead and set this down. You can see it's already swiveling a little bit. It'll rest just fine right there. I gotta get some of these boxes out of the way. There we go, a little room to work. Uh, bed is very nice, also comparable to the Ender 3 V2. We'll take that off in a minute and give you a look at it. First, let's get these instructions out and see what we need to do here. So, warranty card, we'll hang on to that. Installation steps. Straighten the machine. We've done that. Uh, we need to remove the packaging here. This is just plastic shrink wrap. Comes right off. I don't wanna. Here we got a straight blade here. We'll just zip through real quick. There we go. And take that. Pull this right out. Ink and garbage can. Uh, yeah, let's take this bed off completely. We'll put it back on before we start, obviously. Pull these clippies. Set those here. And here is our glass plate. As you can see, it is very, very similar to the Ender 3 in texture. Uh, it basically just doesn't have the Ender 3 logo. That's very nice. I think it's going to work really well. We'll set this over here for now. All right, and our first step, it says, is to lift this 90 degrees. And then we will be inserting some screws. Let's see where they go back here. In fact, let's set this down. Let's take a look. Looks like there is a hole right there, right where we need it. Set that down for just a second. Let's see. Looks like it's gonna be these guys here. These are M5 by 8. We'll slide that back up. We'll take the styrofoam out in a little bit here, but it looks like we're going to get two of these on each side of the gantry. Just like so. Pop out two more for the other side. We'll rotate this guy. Move zip tie there. Hot end's not zip tied, but the ribbon cable is, so we'll remove that as well. Couple pieces of styrofoam to pull. Finish the assembly on this side with these two machine screws here. And here we go. Getting there. Let's go ahead and pop that last one in. Tight. So apparently popping these four screws out will allow you to bust it down and just fold it down. It is kind of nice that it looks like 
if I needed it to, I could slide a couple of them right under this other table. So that is cool. Um, the next step in the instructions is to put the spool holder on. We're actually just going to insert the ribbon cables first. It's looking at the moment like these are actually extra cables. We may need to dig one out of there and attach it by following the instructions here. I'll, I'll uh, see in a minute. It just pops right in there. Pretty smooth. Looks like the gantry is a little loose. We're going to want to tighten the eccentric nut on this. We'll do that in a minute as well. Um, right now we're still getting everything set up. So, next step. Spool holder. All right. That's this guy here. Simple work. Pops in. You just turn it. Locks in place. This is going to use T-slot locking nuts here. So I have those as well. So far this is a super simple construction. It's probably the fastest printer I've ever thrown together, honestly. Having it ready to go like that and just fold out is pretty spectacular. So what we're going to do here is pop two of these guys into the spool holder, like so. And then just barely twist the locking nuts on the other side just a little bit. If I can get it to turn, turn it on a thread. There we go. And then that one, grab a different one. Get this side now. You want to leave them a little bit loose so they have the ability to turn inside the extrusion here. Line them up, pop them in, and we're going to get a handy dandy Allen wrench. Try this one, there we go. And then you'll tighten it down, and in those last turns, it'll tur turn that T knot into the groove there, or that T nut, and, and make it lock, which is what holds it in place. A lot of these printers are assembled mostly with these locking nuts, so I'm actually really happy with the uh, construction of this one. We're gonna, uh, looks like belt tensioners here. I'm gonna put a little more tension on that. Tensioners here, already pretty tight. We can give it that's good. We don't want to over tighten it, that'll cause ghosting and ringing and vibrational problems in your printer. So, um, pretty good there. We are about ready to turn this guy on. It says the next step is to insert the ribbon cables, and that's going to be this one as well as this one. So, we need to. Drop the gantry down and insert this ribbon cable as well. Again, it just pops right in. Then, if you pull this little tab back, it goes in there. Push the tab down, and that will lock it into place. Oh, I got this side a little loose here. Let's try that again. Well, don't be difficult. There we go. This one doesn't actually have a locking tab. Get the feeling it will work pretty well. I was just reading a little label on the top here. This thing has uh, got some warning labels on it. Do not touch the heat bed. Keep hands free from moving parts. When looking, when loading consumables, you need to press them until they fully enter. So, um, consumables is talking about the filament. We'll deal with that in just a minute as well. Let's check out. Next step is to insert the ribbon cable into the extruder. And the next three steps are eccentric nuts here, here, and here. And then the final step is tensioning the belts. I already tensioned the belts, so let's go ahead and get our wrench.
which, let's see if this will fit our eccentric nut. I just have some loose ones here. I didn't want to open another one. So the eccentric nut on the gantry is this guy back here. Ooh, that does fit. Okay. So what you do is basically turn that guy until there is no wobble. Now, uh, it's just an off-centered eye hole in this nut. That's pretty good. So it's, there's just kind of a sweet spot in the rotation. It doesn't matter if you turn it left or right. Once it starts tightening, you're going to want to turn it slightly. There we go. Got rid of most of the wobble in that. This one seems good. It doesn't seem wobbly at all. Um, but it is also riding on a lead screw over here. This is a dual Z, so there's two lead screws. And I'm not seeing uh, any eccentric nuts on the gantry. There are, however, some on the bed. So the way to tell if you need to tighten the bed eccentric nut is to take it and wiggle it. Grab the both, both the front corners and just wiggle it. This one does have a little bit of play. So let's pull it all the way forward. And there are two eccentric nuts. I know you can't see this up there, but there are two eccentric nuts on this side. So you're gonna wanna grab one and turn it a little bit. See if that made it better or worse. That's actually pretty stable. I think we'll just turn the other one slightly in the same direction. And we are pretty steady. So um, that's probably the quickest and easiest setup I've ever seen. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in power cable and turn it off. Now the machine is booting, we do need to put the glass bed back on and we'll have to follow the leveling process. But other than that, this machine was assembled in probably about 15 minutes. So um, very, very fast to get you up and running. It is ready to print. It just needs to be preheated and leveled. So we're gonna go ahead and end this video here. If you'd like to see the test prints on this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Leave a like on this video and let me know if you want to see more from the Focus Odin, Odin 5. This is a really, really cool printer. I'm looking forward to busting out my first prints on it because I'm, I have high, high hopes for the quality. And it looks like the firmware included with the LCD touchscreen is a little bit more robust than some of the other machines we've seen with the same design out of Shenzhen. So uh, really, really happy so far. Can't make any judgment calls until we get those first test prints out. So if you want to know my opinion on this printer, stay tuned for the test print video as well as a video for the full review. That's going to be it for today, guys. Take Nivirus out. Stick around, guys. I got another YouTube recommended video for you right here. And if you haven't already, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Make sure that you smash that like button. We'll see you in the next one. Take Nivirus out.